In this problem, we're asked to find the points on the lemnus gate. This is your lemnus gate, where the tangent is horizontal. So tangent horizontal uh, means the slope, which is the derivative, should be set equal to zero. That means we want to take the derivative of this. So left-hand side, using the chain rule uh, and the power rule, we give a 4 x squared plus y squared to the first power times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x plus 2y, and then the derivative of the inside of y is y prime, or dy dx. And on the right-hand side, we have 25, 2x minus 2y, y prime. And we are interested in, normally we would be solving for y prime here, but since we're going to set y prime equal to 0 and solve for that, let's just do that. And that would set this equal to 0, that would set this term equal to 0. So then all we have left would be uh, 2 times 4 is 8y x squared plus y squared, sorry, 8x x squared plus y squared is equal to um, 50x. So given that, uh, what we need to do is we need to combine this equation and this equation. So this equation, the first equation, the original equation ensures that our point will be on the lemnus gate. And this equation over here, uh, what we found from the derivative would be um, to ensure that that point would be a place where you have a horizontal tangent line. So as we examine this equation, 8x x squared plus y squared is equal to 50x, we have two possibilities. And first case is when x does not, or x equals zero, and when x equals zero, this is a 50x, when x is equal to 0, uh, you have what we would call a degenerate case because you'll have 0 is equal to 0. And then you could take advantage by putting a 0 in for x at that point. Uh, 2 times 0 plus y squared squared, so that's just y to the fourth, <clears throat> is equal to 25. And then that would be 0 minus y squared. So if we bring everything over to one side, we have 2y to the 4th plus 25y squared is equal to 0. And we have uh, y squared is times 2y squared plus 25 is equal to 0. Since you get y is equal to 0, and since this is a uh, sum of uh, more or less two squares, uh, we would get no solution from this by setting it equal to zero. Or you get imaginary solutions, but we don't want that. So the point zero, zero is a possibility, but uh, it turns out that uh, because when you, we put zero into the derivative function, uh, we would get y prime, um, you will get another degenerate case. It turns out that here we have no solution or we're not going to count that as part of our solution set. So the other case is if x does not equal to 0, and if that happens, it turns out that we can divide uh, both sides by 8x, and that would cancel the x's. So let's do that. We have uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 50x over 8x, the x's would cancel and you get just get 50 over 8. Uh, I think this is a good idea because we're going to be able to replace x squared plus y squared in the original equation with uh, 50 over 8, or I guess we can call that 25 over 4. And so we'll put that into the equation 2 times 25 over 4 squared is equal to 25 x squared minus y squared. Um, if we take a look at this, we're going to get x squared minus y squared 
is equal to, uh, let's see, 25 uh, squared divided by 25, we'll get just 25. And then we get uh, 4 squared is 16, uh, cut 2 out, and or cut double, cut in half, and you get 8. So we have uh, this equation and this equation. We've got a couple of equations, a couple of unknowns. Let's put those two together. We'll have uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 over 4. And we have x squared minus y squared coming from this green equation is equal to 25 over 8. And if we add these two together, we get 2x squared. The y squareds are gone. Common denominator, 50, 75 over 8. And divide that through. We're going to get x squared is equal to 75 over 16. And so get x squared or x is equal to positive or negative after taking the square root, root 75 over 16 or root 75 divided by 4. So it looks like we're going to have uh, some positive and negative values of this. And from here, if we put in a positive, uh, what we're going to do is uh, to find the corresponding y, we can either uh, use this equation or this equation to solve for it. I think uh, this first equation with the y is already positive would be good to work with. So let's take that. And you got x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 over 4. We have uh, x is equal to positive or negative 75 over 4. It doesn't matter because we're going to square it and it'll become positive anyway. So both of these, either of these would work <clears throat> so we uh, square that, we get uh, 75 over uh, 16 plus y squared is equal to 25 over 4 and subtract that out. Uh, I guess we need to multiply this by 4 and that's 100 over 16, 75, 100 is 25, so y squared is equal to 25 over 16. And that will give y as a positive or negative square root of that, so that's just 5 fourths. So it looks like the combination of uh, these four points would be our answer. So root 75 over 4. Let's take a look and make sure that we actually get the correct answer. So uh, the smallest x and the smallest y value, that would be negative root 75 uh, divided by 4. And the corresponding y values, what was it again? That was uh, 5 over 4. Let's go negative first. negative 5 over 4 and so all the other combinations of this I wonder if I could just copy and paste uh, maybe not so negative root 75 divided by 4 and let's do the positive one for this one 5 fourths now let's do the positive x values uh, 75 oops 75 divided by 4. Let's put a negative one here first, negative 5 fourths. And positive 75 over 4 with a positive 5 fourths. So um, it's, it's not an easy task. It's uh, quite difficult actually. Uh, but it's not it's not too bad. And just to show you a quick picture of this lemnus gate, uh, we have uh, the equation two times x squared 
plus y squared is equal to 25. And then we have x squared minus y squared. <clears throat> um, we have to do a little zooming out to be able to get this, you know. Um, oh, sorry. This needs to be squared. Okay. Now let's get that lemma skate. So it looks like this. I guess let's reset the graph. Uh, it looks like this. As you can see at the origin, uh, zero, zero, there's nothing going on. The four places where we have the maximum would be right around here and down below and then up here and down below. So that gives those, those values, uh, if we were to find the approximate values, um, we would get these pretty much the same values as uh, we're getting here. Okay, I hope that's uh, that works out for us.